Hi, today we are going to go over how to use the transform editor in Avizo to align two parts of a data set. In this video, we are only going to use the transform editor to approximately align the two parts. So we can then use that as an initialization step of the register images module. This is also the first video in a two part series. In the next part, we will use this approximate alignment to merge the two parts together. So to start out, we are going to load some data in from data, uh, registration, chocolate bar dot part one dash reference dot am. First, we want to remove the ortho slice and add a bounding box, volume rendering and axis object. So spatial data visualized within a viso is placed in a virtual three dimensional world. That world has a unique coordinate system. Every spatial object in a viso can be arbitrarily translated relative to the world origin. Likewise, it can be rotated with respect to the global axes and it can be independently scaled in relation to them too. The axes are centered at the origin of the world coordinates. By default, the X, Y, and Z axes are drawn in red, green, and blue respectively. Additionally, every spatial object in Aviso has an associated 3D bounding box, as well as an optional geometric transformation, which can be defined by a combination of translation, rotation, and scaling operations. One thing to note is rotating a scene within the viewer in like the trackball mode does not change the object position or orientation relative to the world coordinates. Rather, it just changes the point of view of the camera. In order to translate, rotate, or scale an object with respect to other objects or to the world coordinates, we need to use the transform editor. Next, we are going to load another data set in. Then we can attach a volume rendering and change the color map to volume in red and the goal now is we want to align, approximately align, these two parts of the chocolate bar. So to do that, we're going to open the transform editor by clicking here and then see the transform editor opens. I want you to notice now how next to the data module, there is an orange square. We can find the different ports of the transform editor by scrolling down. The manipulator port lets you choose among several different ways of transforming the object. The reset button allows you to restore the independent components of a transformation. You can also undo and redo the last transformation change and copy and paste a transformation from one data set to another. Now we're going to use the draggers to approximately align the two chocolate parts. So to align the data set, we are going to go through the XY, XZ, and YZ planes and align the object in each of those. This will give us a good alignment of the object in 3D. So let's start out with the XY plane. To move the object, make sure you're in interaction mode and then click and drag it over to the other chocolate bar part. That looks good for the XY plane. So now let's go to the XZ plane. First, let's move it up like that. And then we also need to rotate it in this plane. So to do that, we click on one of the balls and drag it around. So that looks pretty good. So next, we're going to move on to the YZ plane. First, let's rotate it like that and then move it so they line up nicely. We don't need a perfect alignment right now because in the next part of the series, we will use the register images module to make the alignment perfect. One thing to note is once you transform the data, the object label is displayed in italics to indicate that either the data or its attached information has been modified. At this point, there's an important concept to know about geometric transformations in Aviso. The geometric transformation associated with the data object is taken into account by the display modules, but it does not modify the original coordinates of the data unless explicitly requested. This means while the object's position in the 3D world changed, the coordinates stored in the data object are not. It is highly recommended to actually apply the transformation in order to change the data's initial local coordinates into world coordinates. Next, we can turn off the transform editor and we can create another bounding box and set the color to green. Now let's create a resample transformed image object and click apply. Now let's attach a bounding box to the resample data. And since crop mode is selected, this means it has the same dimensions and size of the original data and aligned to the 3D axis. Now let's change it to extended mode. This makes it so the new field size 
is adjust to contain all the original field. To do this, the voxel size or dimensions has to be changed. It shows how it is also aligned to the 3D axis, but it fully contains the bonding box of the source field. One last thing, for some types of data like surfaces, I've just loaded in a surface just to, as an example, the transform editor has an apply transform button in the action port. This will apply the transform to the data, replacing it, not creating a new one like resample transformed image module does. This can't be undone, so be extra careful. Make sure to catch the second video in this series where we'll cover how to automatically register the two parts of the chocolate bar together and merge them. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.